So the Daily Telegraph, yet another well-known and infamous uh, ploy and plug for the Conservatives, have once again, just like the Sun newspaper, <coughs> have just tried to conjure up a completely non-story about uh, Sakia Starmer, and this is becoming something of a um, repeating theme for, throughout the last number of days about when things are starting to get desperate is when the Sun tried to humiliate uh, the Sakia Starmer and it didn't work, and now the Telegraph are trying to humiliate Sakia Starmer and it's not worked either. Coincidence, because there's an election coming up. Well, you tell me. So let's uh, let's go and. I wouldn't mind actually one day actually trying to like do a video with Maximilien Robespierre because I could almost be his like his uh, Georges uh, Danton uh, to his uh, Robespierre. Who knows? So um, let's go. Hi guys, the pro-Tory press will do everything in their power. They will twist and turn, lie and cheat in order to help their party. The cons you got that right. I mean, what else were they devised for? Conservatives. So... Here is an example of this. Labour retreats on plan for a better Brexit deal after EU snub. This is from the pro-Tory Telegraph. Labour has scaled back its plans for a quick <laughs> renegotiation of the, of the Brexit trade deal after it was snubbed by the European Union. Now, this doesn't make any sense, and it will be clarified a bit more in the article, but, but it doesn't make any sense because the Brexit trade deal that was signed between Boris Johnson and the European Union will not be renegotiated in 2025. It's up for review. I've been saying this for some time. Yeah. And when people like both in the Conservative Party and the Labour Party were talking about a renegotiation, I corrected them because it's not up for renegotiation. It's simply up for review. It goes on to say, Sir Keir Starmer has quietly dropped his ambition to secure a major overhaul of the pact when it comes up for review in 2025. Up for review. There you have. Up for review. Not... No, there is no reason. Fantastic that the Daily Telegraph uh, contradicted themselves in the span of like a few lines. That's quite impressive. Negotiation taking place here. Now, I don't buy this idea that Starmer believed that he could overhaul the Brexit trade deal if in 2025 as part of this review. Surely, I don't buy for a second that he didn't know the difference between a renegotiation and a review. He's been, he's been following these things as probably as closely as I have, and he knows that in 2025 the trade deal would be up for review, not for renegotiation. EU sources, sources, we don't know who these people are, said it uh, that he was now taking a more realistic approach after Brexit warned him that it would not reopen the agreement. This has never, it's not, they will not, they will not now reopen. It was never on the table to renegotiate. First, the review will happen. Then both sides will, re after the review, decide what the next steps would be. But it's not one side is going to say we're going to renegotiate. The Labour leader has uh, later has criticised the 2019 deal struck by Boris Johnson as far too thin and said he would renegotiate it to boost economic growth. So he can he can make that pledge, but it will not be happening in 2025. In September, he talked about a planned review of how the pact was working, scheduled to take place in 2025, as the opportunity to make changes. So this is, there's nothing wrong with saying that. Starmer has not lied here. He said, we're going to look at this trade deal in 2025, and, we'll, and on the basis of that review, we can perhaps have a renegotiation if the EU, of course, is open to that. But the EU have not said we're not going to renegotiate, just said not in 2025 will there be anything more than a review. He told the Financial Times, as we go into 2025, we will attempt to get as much, a uh, much better deal for the UK. I think that there's more that can be achieved across the board. See, this is very ambiguous language. It's very vague. It's not clear that there would be a review, more than a review in 2025. Just, we will try to get a better deal. As we go into 25, 2025, we'll try to get a better deal. Of course, you can't have a better deal if it's just a review. Yeah. Uh, Nick, Simmons, Nick Thomas Simmons, a Labour's shadow cabinet minister, 
insisted the review would still be an important opportunity for both sides to discuss potential improv- improvements. Yes, there's no, <laughs> that's not news. Both sides will sit down, review it, say, okay, what went well and what didn't go well? Yeah. And is there somewhere we can improve on things? Is there something that would benefit the European Union? Is there something that would benefit the UK? Sir Keir warned um, wants to secure improvements that would ease red tape for British food exporters, exports, sorry, and make it easier for UK professionals to work in Europe. Yes. So if if the EU is open to these things, and I'm pretty sure they would be, then this wouldn't be a problem. But this would be part of the review or following the review. Yeah. So here we have once again a non-story yeah. being spun in an attempt to damage the Labour Party. I can tell you immediately uh, why they've done it, ladies and gentlemen, and because you know it, I know it. They want to make it look as though Labour is only a consortium of the uh, remoners, as uh, people like to put them, or of the 48%. Uh, The press like to imagine that the only people that actually are left-wing are the ones who are completely opposed to the things that... The Daily Telegraph, the Mail, the Express, the Sun, all of those things scream from the heavens that being woke is bad. The Conservatives' policies are good. Um, Completely, um, well, criminalising any migrants coming into this country as much as possible. And that if there is no way to scapegoat, then we'll do the next best thing and just say, oh, by the way, Labour are not actually concerned whatsoever with uh, the impacts of the Brexit deal. So therefore, we will spin a story as much as we can. This is, once again, ladies and gentlemen, a case of look over there, meaning look at something that hasn't got to do with anything. But if we tell you it does, then it means you've got to believe it. I think it's uh, fair to say at this point, ladies and gentlemen, that newspaper editors... Um, they, 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 much like television producers, uh, the, av- the average editor views their audience as a dumb mass of uh, ployable and exploitable proletarian flesh bags with literally no single thought or mind of its own. I've never worked for a newspaper, ladies and gentlemen, but if it's anything like this, this is the, uh, this is again the reason why I read The Guardian, because maybe The Guardian sort of have a different method to things, knowing that they're their target audience is probably different in this manner, but it takes also a very special kind of editor or or journalist to, well, like Nick Gutteridge right here, to be as shameless as this. Nothing more I can say about that. In fact, to be honest, I've even been in the mind to make videos like Maximilian Robespierre because these are the sorts of stories I want to also cover because, well... It's time for the democratic response. And I cannot wait to see all of you guys again for more of the democratic response. So take care and bye-bye for now.